Chapter 4 Farewells His limbs aching from exhaustion, Link crawled out of the hole that brought him into the familiar comfort of the great Deku Tree's meadow. He stood on tired feet and trudged through the withered grass until he was halfway to the edge of the glade. His elation at defeating the Goma Queen was fading as fatigue dulled his senses. Great Deku Tree? Link managed to sound cheerful despite how tired he was. I did it! Navi and I broke the curse! The ancient spirit's mind touched his own, and with it came an overwhelming wave of emotion that filled Link with a sense of sorrow. He didn't understand. Why was the great Deku Tree so sad? The bonding of their minds left Link cold with dread, and the bubble of elation inside him burst. This wasn't what he'd expected. He thought the great Deku Tree would be happy and proud of him. He glanced at Navi, thinking that she must have sensed it too. She was silent, her brow wrinkled with worry as she stared at the great Deku Tree. He's going to be okay, Link told himself. Well done, Link. The great Deku Tree said at last, his words sounding pained. This was not the congratulations Link was expecting. Something is really wrong. I knew you had the courage to destroy the curse within me. The great Deku Tree continued, and Link sensed the pride that flowed from the ancient guardian. Time is short, and there is much I must tell you. Wait, what do you mean? Link asked, alarmed. He, he didn't pay any mind to the fact that he had interrupted the great Deku Tree. What's wrong? The feeling of sadness that flowed through the bond intensified. A dull ache throbbed in Link's chest, growing and spreading outwards. It was only magnified by the Great Deku Tree's next words. Your efforts in stopping the curse were successful. The forest is safe. I regret what I must now tell you, my child. It seems that I was doomed before you started. I feared as much, but I could not confirm it until you broke the curse. It took a very long time for those words to sink in. Doomed? What do you mean? Link asked, his voice trembling. There was a long, terrible pause. Finn, the great Deku Tree, finally replied, his voice heavy with sorrow. I am dying. At first, Link didn't understand. The very idea that the great Deku Tree could die was beyond imagining. It was inconceivable. Death wasn't an entirely foreign concept to him. Saria often tended to sick or injured animals when she found them in the woods. Despite her best efforts, they didn't always survive. I am dying. Those last words hit Link with the force of a savage blow. He was winded, stunned, and horrified beyond words. A harsh gasp from Navi told him he had not misheard. N no. Link's mouth opened, but no words came out. A painful lump arose in his throat, and a dull ache spread throughout his body. What would the other Kokiri think? What would Saria think? He wished she was with him. How else could he face the others if the great Deku Tree died? He couldn't stand the idea of telling them. What would he tell them? But... He choked, unable to speak as tears brimmed in his eyes. You can't die! Great Father, we killed the Goma Queen! Link ran up to the great Deku Tree, no longer aware of the pain in his leg or his fatigue, and collapsed against one of the nargled roots. He could still feel the warmth of the magic that flowed through the tree, but that vibrant hum of power was beginning to fade, barely discernible beneath his fingers. <laughs> no, please! He begged. You can't die! You can't! Hot tears fell unbidden from his eyes, leaving wet spots on the root. He trembled, choking back a sob, and stared up at the great Deku Tree. Please don't go! I have already instructed Saria on what she must do. She will plant a seed in front of me that will one day take my place. I ask that you do not grieve for me. He paused when Link's sobs didn't stop. Child, you must listen. Link wiped his damp cheek with a grubby hand, taking deep, shuddering breaths as he did so. Navi sat upon his shoulder, not uttering a word, tears glistening upon her chinks. Link? At the great Deku Tree's gentle tone, Link sat up, 
pulling his knees against his chest. He wrapped his arms around his legs as if he were trying to form a cocoon and keep away the chill that gripped him. I'm listening, he replied weakly. This curse was the work of a man from the desert. He was possessed by a power from well beyond Hyrule's borders. The sorcerer from the desert does not know the emerald is in the forest temple, nor that I set wards to stop him from entering. Those wards will fail soon. I must entrust you with the emerald's care. It holds the essence of a soul long lost from this world and his power still runs through it. Take it to a place called Hyrule Castle. Navi can guide you. I can leave the forest? Link asked. Navi shuffled uncomfortably on his shoulder. I thought a Kokiri couldn't leave, except to visit the other groves. They can, but the wards that protect this realm only stretch as far as the borders of the woods. If a Kokiri ventured beyond these wards in their present form, they would not survive long on their own. Years ago, one Kokiri did leave the forest, but he was unprepared for what he faced. Though I sent the forest guardians to retrieve him, it was too late. Link looked at Navi, but she would not meet his eyes. Once you get to Castletown, find Princess Zelda. Tell her to warn the ones who hold the other stones. They too will be in peril. The link between his mind and that of the great Deku trees began to weaken. Alarmed, Link willed himself to hang on to that tenuous connection. It was like trying to cling to the memory of a dream. No! Please don't go! Link laid a hand on the great Deku tree's trunk. Find Princess Zelda. The great Deku tree's voice was as soft as the rustling wind. You must not let the desert man lay his hands on the other spiritual stones. Warn the others who guard them. The frayed threads of the great Deku tree's life force began to unravel, his presence drifting away like dandelion fluff scattering before a breeze. I regret there is much more I wish to tell you, all of you, but recent events have been set in motion far earlier than anticipated. Make haste, Link, for time is of the essence. The great Deku tree's voice was barely more than a whisper in the wind. Help Saria keep the others safe, for she is one of the few that hold the key to the Kokiri's future. He was rambling, Link realized, the last desperate struggles of a soul trying to escape its inevitable fate. Farewell, Link, and to you, most loyal sprite. Take care of him, Navi. Please do not grieve for me. And just like that, the tenuous link between their minds broke and the great father of the Kokiri was gone. Wait! Link cried. There was no answer. The great Deku tree's bark turned from a healthy brown to a sickly gray with unnatural speed, and the leaves within his thick canopy rapidly turned brown, shriveling and left to the mercy of the wind. Even as Link watched, some of the leaves began to fall like snow on a winter's day. From one of the branches of the ancient tree, a raven screamed, the air itself seemed to heave a sad sigh, as if the forest itself were bidding the ancient guardian goodbye. Come back! Link sobbed. Tears rolled down his cheeks, splashing upon the gnarled root. He knelt there for some time, weeping silently. How long it was, he could not have said. By the time he finished, the sun was low in the western sky. Link? He almost jumped at the sound of Navi's voice. She had been so quiet, he'd almost forgotten she was there. You heard what he said. We should go. Link nodded. I'll keep the others safe, Link promised the lifeless tree. He became aware of someone approaching from the path behind. He was sure it was Mito, and his heart sank. He breathed a sigh, bracing himself for the coming blow, and turned around. Only it was not Mito walking towards him. It was Saria. Her eyes were red and moist. Fora was staring at the great Deku tree, her eyes wide in disbelief. They both knew. Saria threw her arms around him, not saying a word. For a time, they just stood there and shared each other's grief. Uh, I had no idea this would happen, Saria said at last. I tried to save him, <clears throat> Link said with a sniffle. He swallowed, holding back more tears. I tried, Saria, but I failed. You mustn't think like that, Link, Saria said, stepping back and looking him squarely in the eye. You didn't fail. 
You stopped the curse from spreading, and that's what he wanted. Link did not feel so reassured. He stared at his boots, refusing to meet Saria's eyes. Here, he asked me to give you something. Saria's tone caught his attention as she reached into her tunic pocket and withdrew a large emerald encased in a golden wreath. She gave it to him and Link clutched it gently. When he touched its warm surface, he was certain he could sense a faint hum of magic that resonated from the gem. The Kokiri Emerald? he asked. Yes, Saria said. So, Link thought, it was for this that the great Deku Tree died. Keep them safe. I promise. The great Deku Tree's final wish echoed in Link's mind. The stone could not remain in the forest, and nor could he, not while the Desert Man was still after it. He would have to leave soon. Carefully, he placed it in his satchel and then followed Saria's gaze. She was staring blankly at the great Deku Tree, disbelief plain in her eyes. I always knew you would leave the forest someday, she murmured. I, I didn't want to believe it, but... Her words trailed off into a sorrowful silence. Did the great Deku Tree tell you? Link asked. He did, Saria admittedly, hesitation plain in her voice. What about Mito? Does he know I can leave? No. I'm the only one who knows. I'm sorry, Link. I really wanted to tell you. It's okay. He didn't want to get angry at her. Not now. Not while they were standing before the lifeless trunk of the great Deku tree whose leaves still fluttered from the boughs above. Saria smiled sadly. I'm glad. I, I have something else for you. From her other pocket, she pulled out a wooden ocarina. It was identical to the beige one she always carried with her, except for the little fairy carved into its side. Saria held it out to him. Taking it, he brushed his fingers across its surface. <laughs> Thanks, Saria. Maybe I can put some of that practice you gave me to use. <laughs> she laughed ruefully. Link had never been an excellent student when it came to learning an instrument. The great Deku Tree showed me how to use the flow of elements to infuse the ocarina with earth magic, she said. I could have taught you how to do it if we had more time. Link, we really should get going. Her tone wasn't impatience. Instead, she sounded exhausted, as though it had been her and not Link who'd killed the Goma. You stopped the curse, right? Mito asked slowly. Everyone avoided his eyes except Saria. She placed a hand on Mito's shoulder, and he jerked away at the unexpected gesture. What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that? Mito demanded, suddenly sounding afraid. Link felt too tired to argue with Mito, and his grief from the great Deku Tree's death was still too raw. Saria heaved a sigh, her voice barely audible as she spoke. There's no easy way to say this, Mito. The great Deku Tree is dead. That chill you felt not long ago was a sign of his passing. Y you... What? Mito had never sound so shocked. Well, how? But... Link tensed as the boy's eyes fell on him, suspicious, judging, accusing. Navi hissed in his ear, Link, leave, now! You were meant to save him, Mito said, his voice gaining strength. What did you do? You killed him! You killed him, didn't you? I always knew there was something fishy about you! Mito, you know very well that's not possible. Saria's words, calm but firm, went unheeded. How could you let this happen? Mito rounded on her. I warned you when you brought him here that there was something odd about him. Link should have fled then, but not wanting Saria to have to defend him alone, he jumped to his friend's aid. It was too late to save the great Deku Tree. I tried, so don't blame me and don't blame Saria. Link knew he should have stopped there, but his anger got the better of him, and like a serpent uncoiling in his gut, it stirred. What did you do anyway? He spat. You just ran off. You're a coward, Mito. A coward. The color drained from Mito's face. What did you call me? Let it be, Mito. He didn't mean it. Despite regaining some semblance of his normal composure, Mito took no heed of Saria's words. How dare you? He snarled. Link ignored him and started walking off, yielding to Navi's frantic whispers. Wait! Mito bellowed. Don't just walk away! I want answers! Even as he heard Mito storming towards him, Link tried to ignore the boy. 
That was until Mito grabbed him hard by the shoulder so hard it actually hurt. Link spun around, knocking the boy's arm aside. Leave me alone, he roared, a fire simmering in the pit of his stomach. I want answers first. What did you do? Mito, that's quite enough. Sorry, his voice was firm. I suggest stay out of this, Mito snapped. I want to know what he did. He jabbed a finger at Link's chest. Aware of Navi tugging at his collar, Link turned and continued to walk away, leaving Mito and Saria to yell at each other. He'd barely gotten several steps when Mito's words got his attention. I warned you, Saria! I told you there was something different about him! Something dangerous! Nothing good ever comes of strangers in the woods! I told you! Nothing! A silence followed his words, but before Link could even process what Mito was talking about, he heard heavy footsteps approaching. I haven't finished with you, murderer! Freak, coward, wimp, murderer. As the echoes of Mito's taunts rushed into the forefront of his mind, Link's anger betrayed him. The fire in his belly roared. He turned on his heels, ears ringing, saw Mito reaching for him, and swung his fist into Mito's face. His willow connected with Mito's nose with a crunch. Link knew a moment of regret as Mito recoiled, blood dripping onto his tunic. Then, before Link could seize his chance to flee, rage flashed across Mito's face and the boy was on top of him, fists pummeling at him. With his arms crossed over his head to shield him from the blows, Link stepped to the side. He aimed a kick at Mito's legs, hoping to topple him over. Mito grabbed him as he fell, pulling Link down until they were rolling on the ground, clawing, punching, snarling. Mito's punches were wild and unfocused. Link was more used to defending himself, and so his efforts were more focused. He came out of the tussle and was able to quickly jump to his feet. Link, stop it right now, Saria yelled. Mito, that's enough. Mito! Link was half in mind to obey and flee into the woods, but Mito was fast, slamming a boot into Link's wounded leg. The younger boy cried out, pain flaring through his injured limb. The nearby Kokiri were hesitantly approaching to see what was going on, none of them making a move to break up the fight. Mito jumped towards him, but he was too slow. Link sidestepped him and allowed the other boy's momentum to send him stumbling. Seizing the chance, Link shoved Mito hard, sending the boy's full weight into a boulder beside them. Mito's head struck the rock with a sickening crack, and he instantly went slack. He hit the ground, his head at an odd angle. Link's fury gave way to horror with a sickening lurch, all breath leaving him as though he'd been punched hard in the gut. Oh no, what have I done? An odd ringing filled Link's ears, and his vision swam in a moment of dizziness. Mito? He gasped, voice unsteady. The boy did not even so much as twitch. Saria left Link's side without a word, falling to her knees beside her friend. For a horrible moment, Link thought Mito was dead. That was when he noticed that Mori was still hovering above her injured charge, staring daggers at Link but otherwise unharmed. That meant Mito was still alive. Saria, I, I didn't mean it. I, I didn't mean to go that far. Link stammered, unable to keep his voice from trembling. She didn't answer as she placed a hand on Mito's chest. To Link's relief, the boy's eyes fluttered open for a moment, and then he moaned weakly. What's going on here? Forenz's voice carried through the gathered Kokiri as the boy pushed his way through the crowd. They parted easily, and he came to an abrupt halt at the edge of the gathered throng. Someone else broke through the crowd and ran up behind him. It was Fado, Mito's best friend. She was one of the last people Link wanted to see right now, and so was Forens, but for different reasons. When Fado discovered the source of the commotion, she shrieked and ran to the injured boy's side. Link was sure she might have shaken Mito if another Kokiri hadn't restrained her, fending off a few angry blows from her fist that quickly went slack. Forens, for his part, still didn't move from the edge of the onlookers. There was disappointment written across his face, and the sense of shame that tore through Link's insides was almost crippling. He didn't have long to dwell on it, though. Saria, is he going to be all right? Fado wailed, having finally collapsed into the grip of the Kokiri holding her. She seemed to remember Link and quickly rounded on him. What did you do to him? It wasn't his fault, Mori said quickly. Mino provoked him. Link didn't pay any attention to Mori, despite the fact that she was trying to defend him. The grim expression on Saria's face was frightening. He's going to be okay, isn't he? Forens found his voice at last. Link, what happened? His voice was calm, but the disappointment was plain. It would have been easier to bear if he'd shouted. 
Forens, you have to believe me. I didn't mean it. It's just... Link faltered, his throat going tight, words failing him. Nothing in the world could help him utter the truth he wanted so badly to deny. The great Deku Tree is dead, Navi finished for him. Everyone stared at her. Shock rippled through the forest children as the news spread through the crowd. Their stunned looks were far more than Link could bear. One girl whimpered, another sobbed, and one of her friends moved forward to comfort her. Several grumbled amongst themselves, exchanged a couple of words with Saria that Link couldn't hear through the drumming in his ears, and then left, heading towards the Great Deku Tree's metal. He can't be, Foran said, fear tingling his voice. L look, he stammered, which was very unlike him. Link, you've obviously had a nasty shock. Did something attack you in the woods? Link couldn't find the words nor the strength to tell Forens that he wasn't making things up. It's true, Forens, Saria said solemnly. I was there. Then you saw what happened? Forens asked. He looked towards the Great Deku Tree's meadow as hoping the group of Kokiri who'd just left would come back and explain that this had all been a terrible misunderstanding, that Link had been attacked by something and was not in his right mind. I will explain later. Saria's voice told all that she'd speak no further on the subject. Forens, help me get Mito to my house. Fado, come with me. The Kokiri watched Link as he stood there. He felt completely and utterly alone. It was as if they no longer knew who he was, each one of them staring in fear. Even their fairies watched him. Nobody spoke, and the silence became deafening. At that moment, Link felt as though the entire forest was judging him for what he'd done to Mito and for failing to save the Great Deku Tree. He was surrounded by the Kokiri he'd grown up with, and even then, he felt truly and utterly alone. It wasn't me! Link tried to find his voice, tried to find someone who would look at him, who would not judge him as the others did. You have to believe me! It wasn't me! Silence. Nobody met his eyes. He searched for a friendly face, but the few who met his gaze quickly turned away. Forens and Saria were busy helping Mito, lifting him up as gently as they could. Link, go home. I'll meet you there. Saria's voice was firm and hard. Listen to her, Link, Navi urged him. But Saria, you have to believe me, Link pleaded, tears stinging his eyes. I didn't mean it. Go, Link. Saria's voice was stern, all trace of its usual warmth gone. I'll be with you shortly. Navi, do what you can to see to his needs. Fado threw a filthy look towards Link that Saria didn't notice. He didn't retaliate, knowing full well that he deserved it. Link turned and the Kokiri parted like leaves drifting before a breeze. He broke into a run before they could see the tears that traced his dirt-smeared face. Behind him, there was another outburst of questions directed at Saria and Forens. At an order from the two, some of the older Kokiri moved forward to help keep the younger ones calm. Link didn't watch them. He didn't turn back to see what was going on. He didn't flee back to his home. He ran past it, fleeing as fast as his legs could carry him, the limbs of low-hanging branches whipping him in the face. Roots and vines snatched at his boots, making him stumble, but he kept running, sweat mingling with the tears that blurred his vision. When he finally came to a halt by the roots of a wide tree, Link wasn't sure how long had passed since he'd left the village. His limbs were trembling, his breath ragged. His legs gave out beneath him, and before he knew what was happening, the world became a blur of noise and swirling colors. Distantly, he heard a fairy cry out, and then the forest floor rushed up to meet him. The next thing Link knew, he was in his bed. It was dusk, and somewhere beyond his vision, somebody stirred. He turned his head to see Saria sitting on a stool beside his bed. From the look of her red-rimmed eyes, she'd been crying again. Don't you ever scare me like that again! She scolded him. I was worried sick when you ran off, and then Navi told me you'd fainted. I'm sorry, Link croaked. He glanced around at the familiar environs of his home as Navi flew to his side, relief clear on her face. How did I get here? I had to get help and carry you back. Link was so exhausted he barely noticed his tunic had been changed. He hardly noticed the grime and gore from the day's events, which had splattered him from head to toe, were gone. 
His memory returned slowly, and he vaguely remembered the fight with Mito. Is Mito- He'll be okay. Sorry I finished for him. I gave him some sleeping drought. A headache will be the worst thing he has. I didn't mean to hurt him like that, Link told her earnestly. You believe me, don't you? Of course I do, Sarya said, gently stroking the bangs off his damp forehead. What about the others? Link asked. I don't think it's sunk in yet, Sarya told him sadly. I told them what happened, and some of them saw for themselves. Navi and I both vouched that you tried to help the Great Deku Tree. Do they think I did it? Sarya took a moment to realize what he meant. Of course not. Link wasn't entirely convinced that she wasn't just saying that for his benefit. What did Mito mean by he knew there was something odd about me? It was difficult to recall that experience without feeling the painful sting of those words. That nothing good ever came from strangers in the woods? Sarya's mouth twitched, her expression pained. He didn't mean it. Grief and anger can make people say stupid things. <laughs> that did little to reassure Link. Sarya... Will I turn into a Skull Kid now? What? She seemed startled by the question. Bryn told me Kokiri who do bad things turn into Skull Kids. <laughs> I doubt he was being serious, Saria said with a faint ghost of a laugh. Bryn's always saying silly things. You should know that. Link was too tired to talk about it more, his eyelids drooping. Saria said something else, but he lost it beneath the hazy threads of consciousness. Sarya still sat by his side even as he drifted off to sleep. The last thing he heard were the soft and gentle notes of her ocarina. Link opened his eyes slowly in the pre-dawn light. As he gazed up at the dark ceiling, he realized he must have slept for some time. Sarya was gone, her empty stool the only sign that she'd ever been there. The desert man had not haunted Link's dreams again, but that was of little comfort in light of the previous day. The memory of what had happened still lay heavily on his mind. It should have been the happiest day of his life, and it had been, for a heartbeat. The Great Deku Tree's proclamation that he was dying, his death, and the fight with Mito all brought that crashing down. The happiest day of Link's life had become his worst. A nightmare. If only he could turn back the cogs of time and change it all. Abruptly, he realized his eyes were damp again, and he was chewing his lip to the point it hurt. He rolled over and lay, numb to everything but the steady beat of his heart. He clutched his hand around his pillow, sobs threatening to rise from deep within his chest. Unconsciously, he'd clench his fist around the pillow, as if wanting nothing more than to punch it. Then he heard something, a sound like the distant echo of a song drifting through the leaves. He blinked, sensing something brush his mind. It felt like the strange power that came from the Kokiri Emerald, and the distant notes made him think of the forest nymphs of Saria's stories. Then it was gone, leaving Link keenly aware of the silence that engulfed him. He realized that there was no chirp or carol of birdsong, no croaking frog or even the chirrup of a cricket. There wasn't even the soft clatter of the wind chimes in the canopy above. The forest was still, but it was a cold tranquility not the kind of silence that bespoke of peace. Link rolled again to face the rest of his hut's interior. His eyes fell upon the dark shape of his bag nestled beside the bed. Again, he was unaware of that distant, almost inaudible hum. Link rummaged through his bag until he felt the warm, smooth surface of the Kokiri Emerald. He had the sense of something ancient brushing against his mind, as though a piece of the great Deku tree still lingered within the stone. He withdrew the emerald, holding it carefully in his hands. Hello? He whispered, feeling foolish. Link remembered the great Deku tree, saying that something ancient lingered within the emerald, and for a moment he wondered if it could speak to him. Hello? Nothing. Stupid, he muttered to himself, talking to rocks and hoping it'll talk back to you. Link? Navi called from somewhere beside him. What are you doing? Navi was looking at him, having just emerged from the folds of a clean gray hat that lay on the table. She had not slept soundly, for her eyes were still red and swollen. Nothing! Link lied, thrusting the emerald back into his back. If Navi noticed the lie, she chose to ignore it. I was going to wake you if you didn't wake up soon. It'll be light before long. How long was I asleep? 
Link asked. A while, Navi said. Sorry I made sure the Kokiri knew not to disturb you. <sighs> Thanks, Link replied softly. He hesitated for a moment, not eager to leave his home. It was not the leaving which bothered Link so much. He was certain that, despite Saria's reassurance, the other Kokiri would blame him for the Great Deku Tree's death. Leaving the forest would be as good as confirming his guilt. Most of them knew Link did not have the power to harm the Forest Guardian, but Mito would try to convince them otherwise. Nor was Mito going to be happy that Link had knocked him out. <sighs> Pushing the thoughts aside, Link got ready to go. After eating a simple meal of berries, he donned his gear on and went outside. He clambered down the ladder, jumped the final rung, and landed in the soft grass which was still damp with dew. Then he took one last look at his home. Will I ever see it again? He wondered. Come on, Link, Navi whispered. Turning his back on his home, he walked out of the village. Save for the odd bird and a fairy that neither Link or Navi noticed, no one saw them leave. The forest was silent, and all Link could hear was the steady thumping of his heart. They never heard anyone behind them. When Link reached the edge of the village, he felt strangely relieved. If anyone saw him, they didn't call out. Link did not have far to go until he reached a stream with a wooden bridge over it. It marked the boundary of the grove and the beginning of the Lost Woods. <sighs> he took one step onto the bridge and then froze. Link? Saria, why did she have to follow me? He was afraid to turn back, sure that if he did, he would never leave. Turn back, Saria, he thought. Turn back, please. She didn't. Link, wait! The pain in Saria's voice hurt him deeply. Link paused, closed his eyes for a heartbeat, and then turned back around. Saria's eyes glistened with tears that tore at Link's heartstrings. Fora told me she saw you leaving, she said. I just wanted to say goodbye. They held each other's gaze. For once, Link wished Fora had kept quiet. Leaving was difficult enough without having to say goodbye. He took in the sight of her green hair beneath the small headband. She was wearing an emerald green cloak to keep off the early morning chill. Her sad eyes bore into his soul, begging him to stay. They both knew he couldn't. He'll come back, won't you? She asked. I promise, he told her, his voice breaking. Saria stepped up to him, and they embraced. You're a good friend, Link. She murmured sadly, speaking softly into his ear. You're a good person, Link. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Take good care of the ocarina I gave you, won't you? I'll come back, Link croaked, barely able to speak through the pressure building in his throat. Even as he spoke, he felt sorry a tense, and then she broke away from him. What's wrong? he asked. I had a dream last night, Saria said, looking distraught. And in it, something happened to you. It seems so real. Uh, a chill ran down Link's spine. It was just a dream, Saria. His voice almost betrayed his fears. What if it wasn't? I'm sure it was. Just a silly dream. <laughs> Saria said with a weak laugh. Be careful. Can you promise me that? I will, said Link. When I'm finished finding the princess, maybe we can meet in the meadow? The sacred forest meadow outside the forest temple was Saria and Link's own sanctuary. Certain that it was haunted, the other Kokiri rarely ventured into its hallowed grounds. Saria smiled at the suggestion, yet even behind it, Link could still sense her sadness. I would like that, she said. They stood for a moment longer, not speaking a word. Only the gurgling stream beneath them broke the silence. And soon, Link couldn't stand it. I've always dreamed of going on an adventure, he said. Like one of the great Deku Tree stories? Now I'm on one. His voice trailed off. Now that he was on one, he wasn't so sure what to feel. Excitement? A giddy exhilaration as he explored a world unknown to him? Perhaps? The recent tragedy of the Forest Guardian's death had numbed all his eager excitement. Even a day ago, a mere thought of the chance to explore the woods might have filled him with delight. You'll be fine. I'm sure Navi will take good care of you. Go on, you'd better get moving. Saria stepped away from him, and Link swallowed thickly. Saria, he said hoarsely. I... 
Go, Link. It took all his will not to tear up in front of her. He turned away, wishing the act didn't hurt so much. He ran over the bridge before his emotions could betray him. He broke into a run and fled, not looking back. Navi didn't try and speak to him for some time. He ran, stumbling over the intertwining roots of trees as he sprinted beneath their branches. By the time he finally stopped running, he realized the woods were more sparse. The trees were not clustered close together and their branches no longer intertwined. Dapples of sunlight broke through the thin canopy, enticing Link to venture on. We must be getting close to the edge of the woods now, Navi said. Link didn't reply. He just nodded and tried to ignore Navi's worried glances. You okay, Link? She asked at last. Do you need to rest for a bit? No, Link answered. The sun was well and truly up now, and a cool breeze stirred the trees. Before long, the woods gave way to a splendid vista of rolling hills. Lush green grass stretched out as far as Link could see. Rocks jutted out of the rugged hills, and Link felt a sense of awe at the sprawling wilderness. Why are there so few trees? he asked. Not everywhere has as many trees as home, Navi answered. The idea of being in such an exposed and open area unnerved Link. There was no shelter from the elements or from any wild animals. Navi flew beside him, looking far less awestruck by the wide vista of the wilderness beyond the woods. Are you alright, Link? I'm fine, he lied. Then more truthfully, he added, It's just, I have never been so far from home before. He drew a deep breath and pressed on, leaving behind his home and everything he had ever known.